I'm Zor. Welcome to Inusor Education. Um, I would like to present a couple of problems uh, which I have already discussed in the previous lecture um, about uh, trigonometric series. Problems are exactly the same. However, um, I would like to offer uh, an alternative solution. Um, and this alternative solution, I would say, is quite artificial. So it's like if you know this solution, it's kind of easy to um, to come up with it. But if you don't know the solution, the whole idea, well, not necessarily comes as the first thing in your mind. However, knowing the answer to these problems, which I have derived in the previous lecture, um, I can actually think about some other solution and. That's exactly what I'm going to present right now. So, the first problem was uh, about sum of uh, cosines, and uh, the second problem was about sum of sines. So let's start with the cosine. So we have a problem uh, of summation of this particular uh, series. So we have n members in the series. Um, the base is angle phi. And then on each step, it's added delta 2 delta 3 delta up to n minus 1 delta. Now, our problem is to come up with a formula, which will be in a concise form reflecting the result of this summation. Now, using um, the correspondence between trigonometry and complex numbers, I have derived with a formula uh, which after certain transformations, which I also put in the notes for the previous lecture, looks like this. Uh, cosine phi plus n minus 1 delta over 2 sine n delta over 2 divided by sine delta over 2. So that's the result. And again, knowing the result, I can come up with actually something really um, alternative to whatever the approach I, I, I took. I still like the approach related to complex numbers and geometrical uh, progression better, which is in the previous lecture. However, it's interesting that it can be derived, derived differently, and the idea about how it can be derived comes from this particular formula. Now, what does it mean? It means that the sine of delta over 2 times this should be equal to this product of these cosine and sine. And I also remember, and again, that, that was addressed in the previous lecture, um, something like if you have cosine of u minus v uh, minus cosine of u plus v, it's equal to what? Cosine cosine plus sine sine. This is also cosine cosine and minus sine sine. So cosine will reduce itself and what I will have left is 2 sine sine. Now similarly, if I will add them together, I will have cosine cosine plus sine sine, cosine cosine minus sine sine, so sines will, will be reduced and I will have as a result this, cosine u uh, cosine v. Now, if I want to have sine and cosine mixed together, I should really do with a sine. Sine u plus v is sine cosine plus cosine sine, right? Now, if I will add sine u minus v, what I will have? Now, this is sine cosine and plus cosine v and sine v, and this is 
sine, cosine, minus. So what I will have is 2 sine u cosine v. So basically these are transformations which I used in the previous lecture, and they are kind of trivial, actually. These are uh, trivial identities. And here is what I have, sine. If I will multiply it by all of these, somehow sine and cosine must be played against each other. So let's see how it happens. My general member of this particular um, sequence is cosine of phi plus sum n multiplied by delta. And I'm multiplying this by sine of delta over 2. Now, what will happen? Now, I will use something like this, right? So my m plus de de delta would be equal to, uh, this is a cosine, so this is v. And uh, delta over 2 would be u, right? So I will have, well, this is 2, so I will have to have 1 half of this, right here. Um, 1 half of sine of their sum, sine of u plus v. This plus this. So it's phi plus n, de uh, n delta plus delta over 2, uh, which is sine of phi plus um, how about this? Uh, 2n plus 1 over 2 delta. Is that right? n delta plus delta over 2. n delta plus delta over 2. Correct. And the cosine Uh, no, sine, plus sine, plus sine of u minus v. Now, what's u minus v? It's this minus this. Now, um, if I will change the sign and, and put this minus this, I will have minus, right? That's easier for me. sine of this minus this. Now, in this case, this is phi plus 2n minus 1 over 2 delta. Correct? Now, I am supposed to have u minus v with a plus sign. But if I will have v minus u, sine is an odd function, then this minus would be, right? And in this case, I do want v minus u. Uh, because this is kind of greater than this. So this is my formula for the common member of this uh, of this series, where lowercase n is changing from 0 to uppercase n minus 1. Now, this is actually the key to the whole thing, because if you consider this, and you will really use this common member and um, rewrite your um, series, substituting for each member of this, we, we have multiplied by this sine of delta over 2, right? So whenever we multiply by this, and then multiply by the common member, we will have this difference. And let's just do it from the very beginning. So, 1 half over. Now, this is member with n is equal to 0, and so in my parentheses, I will have sine of n is equal to 0, so it's phi plus delta over 2. This is minus sine of phi minus delta over 2. That's n equals to 0. Now, n is equal to 1 plus, well, actually, I don't need this square bracket. This is over entire thing. Now, with n is equal to 2, I have plus sine. n is equal to 2, uh, sorry, n is equal to 1. n is equal to 1, so it's 
delta plus plus half delta. So it's 3 delta over 2. 3 delta over 2. Minus. And this, for n is equal to 1, would be sine of uh, delta over 2. 5 plus delta over 2. Plus. Now, for n is equal to 2 now, uh, sine of 5 plus. If n is equal to 2, I have 5 seconds delta minus sine of 5 plus n is equal to 2, so it's 3 seconds delta plus, etc. Now, do you see what happens here? This is what happens. This is reduced with this. This is reduced with this. And basically every member would be reduced with the one which is a uh, step over it. Now, what will be remaining is the second member from the first, which is this, and the last member for lowercase n equals to n minus 1, uh, the, the bigger one. So the remaining one, if n lowercase n is equal to n minus 1, it would be sine of phi plus um, 2n um, minus 1 over 2 delta. Close. That's what it is. This will also remain, if I'm not mistaken, right? Again, if lowercase n is equal to capital N minus 1, then this would be 2n minus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1, divided by 2 delta. And the one which has a minus would be reduced with one of the previous ones. So the only thing which remains in this case is one half the last one, which is sine of phi plus 2n minus 1 over 2 delta minus the second part of the first number, which is sine of phi minus delta over 2. That's the result of the summation of the cosines. Now, so if I multiply sine of, uh, sine of delta over 2 by all this, we get this. Now, but my formula was this. Is this the same thing as this? Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Um, so again, if you have sine u times cosine v, remember what it is? Now, this is sine of u plus v, right? It would be sine cosine plus cosine v. Okay, then plus sine of u minus v. Am I right? Is that the right thing? And that would be 2, obviously, right? So again, sine cosine, this is, which is this, and this is sine cosine. And then the second member would be cosine u sine v, and this is minus cosine v, which is reduced. So that's what we have. Okay, so in our case, 
n would be equal to n w over 2, v would be equal to phi plus n minus 1 delta over 2, right? So let's check it out, what happens? u plus v, u plus v equals to phi plus uh, n and n minus 1, so it's 2n minus 1 over 2 delta. u minus v is equal to um, minus Uh, let me do it again. Phi minus n delta over 2 and minus delta over 2. That's my v. And u is equal to n delta over 2. Oh, plus, sorry. Plus. So if I will subtract from uv, I will have minus phi minus delta over 2. Okay. Seems to be working fine. Because this is minus phi minus delta over 2. So the sign of this would be equal to so v minus u is equal to phi minus delta over 2. I changed the signs, right? Um, and that's what actually this is, because I can always put, instead of plus sign, I can put minus sign v minus sign, right? That's the same thing. And that's exactly what I have here. Minus sign of, and v minus u is equal to this. And this is equal to... Uh, u plus v. So this, the numerator, is equal to this. And 2 will be reduced for, for, uh, uh, multiplied by 1 half would, would be exactly like this. So this is exactly the same formula. Now, what does it mean? It means that if I am smart enough to solve my problem, the original problem, as follows. Let's multiply the whole sum by so if this is S, let's multiply S by sine of delta over 2. If I'm smart, if I know that somehow I magically it just occurs to me. Let's multiply by sine of delta over 2. What happens? Then I will have sine and cosine, sine and cosine, sine and cosine, I remember. Then I will use my formula to convert sine times cosine into a difference between two signs. And they will reduce each other, and all of a sudden I will get the final result very simply because only the last member and the first member actually remains. Now, it's similar to summing the geometric progression. If you remember, if I have geometric progression like this, how can I sum it up without remembering the formula, of course? Well, I multiply it by d in this case. Right? Every member is multiplied by v. So this would be this, this would be this, etc. And then I subtract. And as soon as I subtract, I will have this. Instead of this complicated thing, I have only uv to the n, the, the, the very last one, minus the first one. Which is very similar to whatever we did. We were smart enough to multiply it by something which then would be reduced 
and uh, would result in reduction of all the intermediary members, only the first and the, and the last <coughs> one will be remaining. And from here, I'll just resolve it. And that's the formula, actually. Some people do remember, but not me. Um, all right, so this is how you can solve this original problem uh, if you know the result, if you kind of... Well, quite frankly, if you have an experience with solving some other problems similar to this one. That's where it is. Because now, let me just uh, replace this problem with a different one, and let's see if I will have similar results. Let's, instead of cosines, use sines. That's the second problem, which also was resolved in the course of the lecture when I was using complex numbers. What if I have this, the, the sines? Well, again, let's be smart, and let's multiply sine, uh, sum by sine of delta over 2. So, what will I have? Um, I will use a little bit more, like, mathematical notation. So instead of doing this, I will have S is equal to sigma, which means sum. This is the operation of summation. The general is the general member, the common member of this uh, series is this, where n from 0 to capital N minus 1. All right? So if I will multiply it by sine of delta over 2, I will have sigma from n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 sine of delta over 2 times sine of phi plus n delta. That's what I will have, right? So I multiply uh, sine of delta over 2 by an entire sum, and using the distributive law, I can always uh, uh, replace it with multiplication by each member, and then have a summation. So multiplication and summation are reversible in this particular case, obviously, for distributive law. All right, fine. Now, how can I deal with this one? Well, again, remember, cosine um, u plus v minus cosine of, well, actually, look, let me start with u minus v, because u minus v will result in a plus minus cosine of u plus v is equal to 2 sine u uh, sine v, right? Again, this is cosine cosine plus sine sine. This is cosine cosine minus sine sine. Now, cosine will be reduced, and this minus cosine and this minus will be plus, and that's why I have 2. Now, so this is what basically what I have, right? So let's consider that u is equal to phi plus n, w, uh, n delta, sorry, and v is delta over 2. Which means that my sum would be sigma n from 0 to n minus 1. So this is u, this is v. So I will have cosine of u minus v, which is um, phi plus uh, 2n minus 1 over 2 delta. Am I right? It's phi plus n delta minus delta over 2, right, that's what it is, minus cosine of phi plus uh, 2n plus 1 over 2 delta, right? So that's what we have. And now, let's think about, with um, n is equal to 0, 
I will have a cosine equals. Now we can convert back into the um, explicit sum. Phi n is equal to 0, so it's minus delta over 2, minus cosine phi plus n is equal to 0, delta over 2. Next one. When n is equal to 1, I will have cosine of phi plus delta over 2, minus uh, cosine of phi plus uh, 3 seconds delta. That's first two members. Now, the next one, for n is equal to 2, that would be 4, 3, 2, cosine of 5 plus 3 seconds of delta minus cosine of 5 plus 5 seconds of delta plus, etc. Now, the same thing exactly happens. This is reduced with this, this with this, this with this, etc., etc. And the only thing which would be remaining is the, the one with the negative sign of the last pair, uh, which is uh, for n lowercase n equals to n minus 1. So that would be uh, cosine of phi plus, this is my general, if n is equal to, lowercase is equal to n minus 1, it's 2n minus 2 Um, no, this one will remain. This one will be reduced to the previous one. So this one will remain. So plus 2n minus 2 plus 1, minus 1 over 2 delta. That's the one which will not be reduced. Right. So, whenever I multiply this by this, I will have only two members, cosine of phi plus 2n minus 1 over 2 delta, with a minus sign. Right? Yes, minus sign. Because the previous one with a plus sign will be reduced. And the one which in the beginning would be with a plus sign, cosine of phi plus delta over 2. So that's the result of summation in a concise form. Because now you can say that since Since S times sine of delta over 2 is equal to this, then S is equal to cosine of phi plus delta over 2 minus cosine of phi plus 2n minus 1 over 2 delta over sine of delta over 2. So this is the final formula. And again, it can be converted into a product um, using the same, basically, um, philosophy uh, as I was using before. Because the final formula should look uh, like a product of two, uh, of two signs. Um, now, the final formula, as I wrote it here, is sine of phi plus n minus 1 delta over 2 times sine of n 
delta over 2 divided by sine of delta over 2. Now, the question is, is the product of these signs exactly the same as this? Well, again, um, uh, it, it's probably very easy to prove using exactly the same formulas as before. Um, so, 2 sine u times sine v is equal to what? How can I get sine by sine? I have to have cosine of uh, difference and minus cosine of sum. Now, this is the cosine times cosine minus sine times sine. I mean, plus sine by sine. And this is also cosine cosine, but in this case, minus. So cosines will be reduced, sines will remain. This minus and this minus would be with a plus sign. So that's the formula. So my question is, if u is equal to u is equal to 5 plus n minus 1 delta over 2, and v is equal to n delta over 2. Now, u minus v is equal to uh, phi minus delta over 2. Am I right? And u plus v is equal to phi plus two n minus one over two delta. Is that right? made a mistake here. That should be minus. Right. So cosine of this and sine of, and cosine of this. Yes. Yes. I, I, I think I made a mistake when I was transferring uh, the formulas from one to another. Um, so basically that corresponds to the formula which I have derived uh, in the previous lecture. And um, the purpose of this was, if you are experienced enough solving all these problems, different methodologies would probably come to your mind just you know by themselves. So the, the, one, the one methodology which I was presenting on the lecture, in the previous lecture, was about using the complex numbers and geometric segments. Now, in this particular case, I actually came up with a different solution multiply by sine of delta over 2, and then transform product of sines or product of sine times cosine into a difference, and all consecutive members will be reduced. Um, well, that's another approach. You just have to you know, be equipped, so to speak, that you can approach it this way, you can approach it that way. There are only a finite number of approaches. So the more, you, the more problems you solve, the, the richer your repertoire is, basically. So um, I will probably present some more problems in the same kind of area. And most likely, either one of these two approaches would work. The only thing is you have to like recognize, you have to find out, OK, I really have to multiply by delta over 2, the sign of delta over 2. Why? Well, in this case, I can actually give you a hint why. You see, the difference between all consecutive members is delta. So whenever you have delta over 2, that's half of the difference. Basically, what you're doing is you're replacing two consecutive members with the middle one minus delta and middle one plus delta. Well, actually, delta over 2 if this is delta. So you have the middle one, the delta is a difference, 
and you replace this one with middle one minus half delta, and this one with, the, with middle one plus delta. And then, whenever you are doing other calculations, they are reducing each other. Each consecutive member would, 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 would be reducing, right? Because this one is middle minus delta over 2, but on the previous step, you had middle plus. So that's why. Um, all right, so again, this is uh, all I wanted to say about this particular problem, these particular two problems. And uh, again, I'll try maybe to put some more on the, on the web. And uh, don't forget that everything would be uh, in the notes on unisor.com for every corresponding lecture. Um, that's it. Thank you very much, and good luck.